Hey guys, hello and welcome to SME's Garage. Today we're here with a 2007 Toyota Camry equipped with the 2.4 liter engine, uh, 2AZFE. Um, I just purchased this car. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it yet, whether it be a daily driver or a flip or whatnot. Um, whenever I see these things get traded in at my dealership, I kind of jump on them because I like them. I've always been a Toyota guy. Uh, I actually learned to drive in a car exactly like this at 2008. Uh, so they do have a little bit of sentimental value to me. Uh, so this car is hurt a little bit. It's not, it's not anything that we can't fix, and that's kind of what we're going to start doing here today. Um, we're going to be putting a radiator in this car first and foremost because the radiator is leaking. Uh, I'm going to show you where it's leaking. It's leaking right at the crimp where the plastic tank meets the, uh, the aluminum heat exchanger. Uh, I don't have the radiator yet. It's supposed to be here, but it is not. Um, so we're just going to start draining the coolant. We're going to get the radiator out of the car. And uh, then it's going to sit here until my new radiator comes in. Um, so this is going to be a video of, of just a, basically a, a do-it-yourself video for the radiator. Um, I'll do like a little technical review on the car later um, and why honestly if you're not a mechanic you should kind of avoid a vehicle with this engine because they are known uh, for several issues. Uh, number one being uh, oil consumption and number two being uh, problems with the head bolts in the cylinder block. Uh, the threads in the block actually strip and it lifts the head and uh, the correct way to fix it is a new short block. Uh, but you can drill them out and do time certs. So um, it's one of those things where if you're a mechanic, these are great cars. Um, if you're not, they can really become money pits. Uh, so without further ado, let's go ahead. Let's, uh, we're going to open up our radiator cap and uh, we're going to start draining the coolant. All right, guys, now safety is key here. Before you pop your radiator cap off, you're going to want to Touch your upper hose just very lightly and squeeze it and see if there's pressure on it. If it's warm and there's pressure on it, let the car sit, let it cool down. Uh, this one is a little bit warm, so I am going to let it sit for a few minutes before we pop it off. Uh, while I'm waiting, I'm going to go ahead and get my drain pan, stick it under the car, under by where the, uh, the pet cock is. That way we can start draining this radiator. All right, so we're going to go ahead and take our radiator cap off. Even if the engine's cold, you're going to want to take it off nice and slow. So I just kind of put my hand on top, and I'll twist. And if there is any pressure, I'll just kind of let it slowly go back into the overflow. That's usually the best way to do it. This one doesn't have any pressure in it because we did let it sit. Uh, actually, I lied. There is a little bit of pressure in there. Let's close that back up for a second. And what we're going to do, instead of letting it overflow that way, we're going to open up the petcock and let the radiator drain. And then I'll open that up. So on this car, I do want to show you this. The petcock is right over here below the uh, cooling fan. You'll see it right there. It looks like a little wing nut. So be careful, like I said, if your engine's hot, you don't want to get burned. Have your, your drain pan down there you know, ready to catch the coolant. I just kind of have it shoved up under here, but if you look down that little hole, you'll see it. So she's there. So I'm gonna reach down and open up this pet cock. Okay. And we're gonna let her start draining. As you hear, so now that I let the pressure out there, once I open up this radiator cap. Wow, this thing was pretty empty, huh? Yeah, she's pretty low on coolant. So let's just let her drain. Make sure it's all going in our bucket, which it is. We don't want to get any coolant on our brand new garage floor, because then I'd hear it from my wife. So while that's draining, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a couple things. I'm gonna take my 10 millimeter electric impact, and I'm gonna get this air cleaner out of the way, because this whole radiator core support's gonna have to come off. We're gonna have to unbolt this latch from the core support, 
And uh, we're going to try to do this without pulling the front bumper, which I think is definitely doable. We're going to have to get a short little wrench and get in here. Um, so let me go ahead. Let's get this air cleaner off. And uh, let's take it from there. Yeah, that one broke. That's typical with these old cars. Probably have to drill that out. Worry about that another time. Let's get the other one off. If I can even get my tool. Yeah, that one broke too. All right, we're gonna drill them both out. You can tell this car hasn't really been apart much. So, got the snorkel out of the way. Oh yeah. Those bolts were done for. All right. So we got the air cleaner off. Let's uh, let's start pulling this core support out. It's going to be one, two, three, four. It's going to be four 10 millimeter bolts here. And then, like I said, we're going to have to screw around with these horns and this latch. So let me get these off, see exactly what we're going to have to do, and then I'll show you. All right, guys, so here's where we're at. I unplugged both of my horns. I left the hood latch cable connected, and I took out these four bolts. One, two, three, four up here. And then there was a fifth one here, and there was a sixth one right here so six bolts in total 10 millimeter bolts and I was able to lift the radiator support right out now one thing you're going to want to do is these little rubber feet for the radiator your new radiator is not going to come with these so you're going to want to make sure you take these off and place them somewhere safe that's where I put all my stuff is up there so our next step here we have to do a couple things we have to take these upper the upper and lower hoses off we have to unbolt the condenser, the air conditioning condenser from the radiator, which looks like two 10 millimeter bolts and that should separate. And then we have to pull our cooling fans out, which looks like it's just a couple of clips and they should lift straight up. Um, so let me disconnect my condenser from the radiator and get these hoses off and I'll be right back with you. Now there are two more 10 millimeters that hold the condenser onto the radiator. There's one down there and there's one down there. You could just about see the heads of them. Um, if you're doing this at home like I am and you don't have the means to evacuate your cooling system for your air conditioner, you're going to want to reach down there and take them out. Otherwise, when you pull the radiator out, it's going to pull the condenser with it. And uh, that might be a little tricky with these lines going in there. We'd have to unbolt the lines and you know do all kinds of fun stuff. Uh, so I'm going to reach down there with my janky little arms and pull those two more 10 millimeters out and then that will completely free the condenser from the radiator and we'll have all the room in the world to start, you know, pulling this thing out of the car. So you'll see now that my condenser is completely free of the radiator. So now I'm at a point where I can get this upper hose off and start pulling these cooling fans, which like I said, they're just held in with clips. So let's get this upper hose off like I said I was going to do and we'll start pulling this thing out. Alright, so we got our upper hose here off. We got our lower hose here off. I took the lower hose off at the thermostat housing because I'll swap the hose over once I get the radiator out of the car. I didn't feel like burying my elbows down there. Um, so now we're going to get these trans cooler lines off and then last but not least, like I've been talking about this whole time, we're going to get these fans out of our way. All right, guys, we got our cooling fans out of the way. We got our overflow degas bottle, whatever you want to call it, disconnected. Our trans lines disconnected, upper and lower hoses. I got my kid's sled down here, ready for any spillage. And uh, we're ready to lift this radiator up and out of the car. Now this is where I wanted to show you where it was leaking. 
So let me rest, rest this right here. I'm going to take you off the tripod. And I want to show you what I'm talking about here. Right down here where this crimp meets the lower tank, you can see all the pink residue. That's all dried up coolant. So this thing's been leaking for a while. Now, we are going to have to transfer these hoses over to the new radiator. I'm probably going to go get new clamps for them because they're pretty beat. Um, I do have to take this hose off. And then you also have rubber feet down here at the bottom of the radiator that you are going to have to reuse. So again, make sure you take them off. And uh, now we play the waiting game from FedEx. Wait for our new radiator to get here. And we put the car back together. Thanks for watching. All right, guys, we're back with you. It's the next day. Uh, we got our new radiator here. Um, you're just going to want to look it over, you know, make sure you don't see any major defects. It's okay if there's a couple of little nicks or something in the, uh, you know, the, the aluminum. But just make sure you don't have any on the actual little cores. If you have a leak, you know, a, a nick on one of them, you can have a leak. But the little bit on the fins ain't going to hurt anything. Just inspect your, you know, all of your nipples and your fittings. Make sure they are all in the right place. And uh, everything looks to be in order on this radiator. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to put our little rubber feet on, and we're going to uh, set it in the car. Just took our little rubber nipples off the hoses, the hose barbs for the trans cooler. And we're actually going to put those hoses on before the radiator goes into the car. We put our rubber feet in at the bottom of the uh, radiator support. Connect our trans cooler lines. Get the trans fluid off my hand. guys remember we had the um, the condenser we had to unbolt that from the front of the radiator so we're gonna go ahead start bolting that bad boy back in also
going to have to do these by feel. There's really no way around it. You can't see the hole or nothing. All right, guys, so we got our condenser bolted up to the radiator. Uh, we got our rubber feet on top of the radiator that helps support it to the radiator support. So now we're going to go ahead and slide our cooling fans in, being careful not to damage the new radiator. So let's slide this into place. Over. in that's in these should clip on now one two three all right put our harness back in for our fans plugged in. Let's get our upper radiator hose. Get that on. Grab our pliers.
now we get to play the lineup, the bolt holes game. So let's uh, let's go all these bolts started, and I'll be right back with you. So we got all six of our bolts started. One, two, three, four, five, six. You always want to start them first by hand so you can kind of manipulate everything to line up. Now that they're all started, I'm just going to go ahead and run them down, tighten them up, and uh, go from there. All right, guys, so we got our spill-proof funnel set up to burp this thing. I had to use a piece of string as like a spacer, so that's kind of ghetto. Just don't really pay attention to the string. But we're just going to slowly add this coolant. Um, I did use pink Asian vehicle formula. I usually use um, Xerex. Uh, they were out of stock at that, you know, at Walmart, so I just grabbed this stuff. Uh, it's the same color as the Toyota pink red. It's supposed to be super long life. Um, and it says right here it is for 1990 and up Toyotas, Lexuses, and 2004 and up Scions. So this is the good stuff. And uh, we're just going to fill this thing up. One gallon down. Get to work on the second gallon here. Let it suck down what we put in so far. Squeeze our hoses a little bit, help it, you know, burp a little before we fire it up. Keep your face clear because as the air bubbles come out, they're going to shoot coolant all over you. Alright, let's put a little more in it. Alright, we're going we're gonna to fire it up in a second, back it out of the garage, and we're going to burp her. So stay tuned. Uh, we got some broken bolts here on our radiator support that help hold the, uh, the air cleaner on. I'm going to show you how to, you know, drill them bolts out, re-thread them. That way you can, you know, anchor your stuff back down. Uh, we have one here one here and we're basically just gonna you know we're gonna drill it out we're gonna start with the smallest size as we can and we're just gonna keep going bigger and bigger until we're all the way through and uh, then we're gonna tap it with a uh, tap and die set let's start try to get it centered as you can in the hole Alright guys, so she's outside, she's running. We're gonna let her run until it, you know she burps. Basically you wanna have the upper and lower hoses both hot. Um, you can wait till the cooling fans come on uh, if you want, but you don't have to. Once that thermostat opens, both of those hoses are hot, you're good. Uh, we did take the time and drill and tap these two bolts out that broke. You can see some, some metal scrap there, so that's done. And uh, once she's done burping, she's going to be ready to roll. So thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, everyone helps. And I'm really trying to grow this channel. So I appreciate you watching. Hopefully this helped you. And we'll see you next time.